Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Arnie Lukes here at the Crossroads Forum. Um, and my guest for today is Beata Lukes from Adelaide. Welcome, Beata. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Now, the topic I brought up today essentially was about um, some articles that were in the um, Australian. One in particular was by Jacinta Price, and she talks about virtue signalling and at the same time, the innocents are suffering. And I, I completely agree with her perspective. Um, I haven't actually read the whole article. I just read the headline. But the fact is that the way I, what I get from the article is that her community is suffering. And yet there are people who want to change the day or they want to denigrate the uh, history of us, long and, long and uh, proud history of Australia. They want to denigrate it. Um, and they want to uh, essentially disrupt the the uh, civic society that's actually built up the infrastructure that everyone enjoys. And uh, and I find that um, her, Jacinta's position is quite compelling, in that uh, we need to actually look at the um, the root cause of these things and where they actually originate from. Now I've recently read a book called Brainwashing, and it's quite an extensive book. And it uh, took into account the case histories of those soldiers who were servicemen who were incarcerated in the Korean War and how a lot of them came out. In fact, one third came out and were essentially in a position of being anti their own nation. And, uh, and I found that interesting that uh, brainwashing was so effective. And so the book itself went back to Pavlov, the experiments that he did with dogs and humans and... Um, and of course, once you recognise the actual methodology, you realise that we're actually under this cloak of brainwashing in Australia with our mainstream media. Now, Beata, you, you were originally from Poland, and I just wondered if you'd uh, give us some idea of your experiences, your first-hand experiences in, uh, in Poland. Hmm. Uh, how about media? Uh, speeches by our illustrious leaders that didn't make any sense and um, all the newspapers repeating the same thing over again but but those things did not make sense in real life mm -hmm. uh, planning something for 20 years well it never came about mm -hmm you've got to have plan B and plan C and, and so on mm -hmm. to keep up with the immediate um, needs of the situation of the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, this, was, this was seriously uh, uh, propagandized and <laughs> brainwashing through, through those media. Also, of course, education. Um, uh, had stepped in and history was definitely uh, presented in a different light. Mm. So whatever I'm reading on this side of the border uh, in English and coming from other authors than <laughs> Russians and Poles over there, it's, it's totally different. Mm. That's interesting. Um, interesting observation because I know that in Australia, we are constantly under attack for our history. History of coming mm -hmm. to Australia, of colonising Australia, mm -hmm. and essentially building up from a blank canvas, building up an entire nation of infrastructure: roads, bridges, railway lines, power, telephone, water, sewerage. Um, these things took effort and of course the early australians were pioneers in a, in a harsh country and uh, mortality rate was high and yet um, we were able to carve out nationhood and of course the institutions uh, in my mind not just the physical construction of infrastructure but the actual institutions of trial by jury common law habeas corpus bill of rights well when i say bill of rights rights that are entrenched within the common law and of course, the, the jewel in the crown is our limited constitutional government. It happens to be monarchical, but it is limited constitutional government. And mm. to me, this is the high watermark of our culture. And, uh, and the fact is that those institutions are essentially built up over millennia based on the, the, our, our forefathers' understanding 
of what works. And of course, this what works is essentially rooted in the uh, Christian philosophy. And I, I noted that in Poland, there was a, always has been a very strong uh, Christian influence over the nation, Beata. Yes, it is. It is very strong still. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it sort of upholds a lot of values that otherwise would be lost in, in all this influx of foreign people and all the, you know, influences from the West, if you wish, mm -hmm. which are not necessarily going in the right direction. Um, but Poland seemed to be holding on to the traditions mm -hmm. and and Poles prefer seem to prefer to be just Poles, not mixed in with thousands and thousands of people, and they're speaking out very clearly. Mm. Mm. I noted that so. the um, in regard to that's an interesting point that in regard to the influx uh, coming across all of Europe, it seems to be that the um, the countries that were behind the Iron Curtain, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Poland were behind the Iron Curtain for so long. They understand how essentially uh, rampant immigration isn't isn't in a sense a good thing because in the end it becomes invasion. And they recognise that their culture is worth holding on to. And so I find it I find it fascinating that uh, in this book that I read there were three tools, if you like, or three anchors that held on to, um, were able, the, the prisoners of war who were able to hold on against the propaganda and brainwashing. One was the strong sense of family, a strong sense of family, love and mutual cooperation. The second was uh, a personal, intimate and constant ongoing relationship with God, so that they were in constant communion with God. And the third was that they had a sense of nationhood, that their country was their country and they loved yeah. their country and their country in return reciprocated and gave them security and home and a place to be, a place where they could identify with. And so these three things were the, um, if you like, the anchors, the three pillars that uh, yeah. held in good stead for those prisoners of war and no doubt um, you would see that exact same thing in uh, in in Poland even today. Mm. Well, I, I haven't been back for for many years, but um, it, it I think it all comes down to the household. And as far as I remember, and what I experienced was um, that everyone was living together. The, the conditions may not have been the greatest as for space, separate bedrooms for everyone and such things. Mm -hmm. But we had the basics and the grandmother was with us, mm -hmm. um, living with us. Nobody ever thought of putting people to homes. Mm -hmm. um, they cared for them at home. Mm -hmm. And so your grandmother, um, more than your parents, would take you to church. Mm -hmm and would take you to processions and, and such things. And of course, Christmas was celebrated totally differently than it is here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about going to mass, going to see all the, all the displays of the nativity. stables in mm -hmm. nativity scenes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so um, influence was great. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, in the home, everyone contributed to something that they were good at. Mm -hmm. And cooking was done at home mm -hmm. and reading books and, and such things. So, mm -hmm. yes, it's a totally different place it was from, from what I found in Australia. Mm -hmm. No worries. I appreciate your uh, candidness, Beata, because it's um, it's not easy in a sense. And I'm going to ask the obvious question. I'll give you time to think about it. But um, the the good that you see, and uh, and that and but in Australia you still came to Australia, so obviously there's reasons for that. And I'll ask I'll ask you that in a sec. But uh, in in my view, what we're seeing today in, in through our media and through our political class, if you like, our elites, is that we are 
We are being uprooted from our culture, our history. We are being uprooted from traditional family and this, this wholesome base that essentially builds the individual. The family institution builds the individual. The calibre of the individual is, is really the bedrock of community, society, and in our case, civilization. we call it. The family. How the mother who rocks the cradle actually, well, I say mother, the homekeeper who rocks the cradle actually rules the world because they are just one generation away from the leaders. And so that being that the mother of the leader, they actually do rule the world, whether it's male or female, it makes no difference. And so on this, in this um, cohesive arrangement of family and extended family, we're, we're fortunate we have a mother whose, whose grandmother is present in our extended family and we're, we're very fortunate for that. And, uh, but those things to me, traditional arrangements, tradition being the, the wisdom of the past is not something that you give up lightly. And when you look at the, um, if you like, the Bolshe I say Bolshevik, and I, when I say Bolshevik, I mean the, the, um, uh, the Pavlov training, the Bernays, e uh, Edward Bernays training of propaganda, of public relations, of crystallizing public opinion, essentially manipulating whole societies. These things are actually deconstructing families. They're de deconstructing uh, our anchor being our religion. They're deconstructing our culture, our history, our traditions, the, uh, the proud history of Australia. Um, I think it's absolutely wonderful that it's been pioneered, developed, evolved and, and defended, defended and realistically, practically and marvellously stories of bravery and, and individual initiative of, of defending our own nation. And so these things... These are not wasted, and I know that um, parts of Poland, of course, the history of Poland is of its heroes. It's of its um, it's of its formidable odds, overcoming essentially going and defeating the dragon. You've got your own stories of Saint George and the dragon, Beata. Yes, definitely. Hmm. Um, uh, should I bring one up? Um probably um defending of of vienna by polish king mm -hmm. uh, and defending from the eastern you, invaders <laughs> that's that's it that's that's yeah. yes the mildest uh, word you can use eastern in, invaders who who swore to go and and make their capital in rome mm -hmm. so they were going to walk through all of Europe to mm -hmm. get to Rome mm -hmm. and destroy our civilization. Mm -hmm. So this is this is um, always very vivid in uh, in, uh, in the memory of of every Paul mm -hmm. from all the descriptions that they could read about or see in the movies or mm -hmm. yeah. That, that's interesting because what you've painted in my mind's eye. Beata is folklore, folklore, mm. the actual, the stories of, of mm. the ancients, the stories of those heroes who went out of their way and gave up all. And, uh, and I know that it's quite vivid in our folklore, when I say Australian or British, if you like, folklore of St. George and the dragon, overcoming the dragon, subduing. And of course, in that overcoming and subduing is the, um, is the gold or the virgin or both whatever mm -hmm. the the mm -hmm. uh, prize of great price and uh, and so i think these are these are absolutely wonderful things so yes i, I just want to I, i'll i'll let you <clears throat> run your, your race in a minute and then i'll i'll pull up stumps because we're running out of time but um i think these are very very important vivid pictures we need to paint not just for ourselves but also for our children beata yes um I think that's that's the most important, um, the stories mm -hmm. that we can tell our children, uh, spend time with them and and tell them mm -hmm. yes, talk mm -hmm. talk rather than you know watch TV or <laughs> anything else like that. Mm -hmm. Children need more attention in in different departments, mm -hmm. 
and um, we we shall of course talk with Judy when she comes back next week, perhaps mm -hmm. about the home and household and and who uh, what carers do for that household. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I agree, and that to me is it's a vital role that's played, and that is the, of the home carer, and mm -hmm. uh, and the, how they are so instrumental in grooming the next generation. And if we hand our if we hand the next generation over to government, we just see them indoctrinated, reorientated to a, a religion that uh, is foreign, and uh, a philosophy that is foreign. And they're disorientated as to their cultural history and, of course, community. And ultimately, of course, the family is deconstructed. And, uh, and that, to me, is most important. I think, I think today Jacinta Price has done a great favour for us um, by talking about priorities. And the priorities are, the, um, are those that are vulnerable and, of course, um, suffering. So... Um, I'd, I'd like to uh, just bring us to a close on that. I think that's excellent. And I just see that uh, Judy's here and we might, we might even go for stage two. So thank you so much, Beata, for today and for thank the you. forum. And uh, I look forward to uh, catching up with you again soon. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Arnie Luke's at the Crossroads.